I just bought a set of jewelry worth $20 million when my best friend Stacy would send me a message. I opened the photo she sent. The lighting in the private room was dim. Luther Besson had his long legs crossed, holding a petite and charming girl in his arms, smiling indulgently. I had seen this girl before, she was a new intern at Luther's company. I clenched my phone, turned off the screen, feeling a bit weary. Before Luther and I got married, the Besson family had gone bankrupt overnight. After our marriage, the Besson family relied on the Clark family's resources to make a comeback. But Luther seems to have forgotten that now. The vibration of the phone interrupted my thoughts, and Cindy Cooper actually sent me a friend request. In the coffee shop, Cindy Cooper sat across from me. She wore a white dress, looking at me stubbornly. Mrs. Besson, I'm different from you. I love Luther for who he is. You spend money lavishly every day, how could you understand the hard work he puts into his job? I stirred my coffee, raised my eyebrows indifferently. As the daughter of the Clark family, why shouldn't I spend money? Cindy frowned, seemingly puzzled as to why I wasn't angry. Luther and I are truly in love, you don't understand. My gaze fell on her out-of-season dress. I curled my lips, raised my finger. I wore that dress two years ago. Next time, get Luther to buy you a better one. Cindy's face instantly turned red, she bit her lip hard. I took a sip of coffee, ready to leave. Opposite me, Cindy's eyes suddenly reddened. She bit her lip, looking towards the door. I was curious when Cindy weakly spoke up, Mr. Besson. I turned my head, it was Luther Besson striding towards us. He frowned slightly. Standing between us. Cindy poked out half her head from behind Luther. His eyes filled with protectiveness, Winnie, there is no need to speak so harshly. Cindy is timid, don't bully her. I gave Luther a cold look, ignored him, grabbed my bag, and walked out of the coffee shop. I called my lawyer, asked him to draft a divorce agreement. When I got home, Luther's mother called, asking me to go back to the old mansion for dinner tonight. My sixth sense told me that this dinner would be anything but peaceful. As soon as I arrived at the Besson old mansion, I saw Cindy and Luther's mother sitting on the sofa, chatting and laughing, enjoying themselves. Even when I greeted them, Luther's mother didn't hear me. It wasn't until Cindy pointed it out that Luther's mother looked at me, then coldly and indifferently asked me to have a seat. Is this how you came? I was slightly stunned. It was obvious that she was unhappy because I didn't bring a gift this time. I smiled and nodded, yeah, what else? Luther's mother saw the new necklace I was wearing today. She immediately said, Winnie, you should understand Luther's hard work. You don't earn money, so you don't know how hard it is for him. I rolled my eyes, it's just a necklace, how much could it be worth? I have hundreds more in my closet at home. Luther's mother was choked by my words, her face turned ugly. At this moment, Luther came back. He was stunned for a moment when he entered the door. Obviously, he didn't expect Cindy to be there too. Luther's mother pulled Cindy up and stood. Luther, you came back at the right time. I have something to announce later. At the dinner table, Luther's mother announced with a smile that Cindy would be staying at the old mansion for a few days. Cindy's eyes gleamed with joy. Luther's hand paused as he was picking up food. I ate my meal absentmindedly, watching the group make a scene. Seeing that everyone had almost finished eating, I took out the divorce agreement. And said directly, Luther, let's get a divorce. Everyone was stunned. Luther was the first to react. Winnie, what are you joking about? Luther's mother also changed her expression instantly, slamming her chopsticks on the table. Winnie Clark, what are you doing? I'm just letting Cindy stay for two days, why are you throwing a tantrum? Cindy Cooper put on a pitiful look again, as if she had suffered a great grievance. I looked at Luther, my eyes full of ridicule. Ding! This novel reminds you to click the subscribe button in the bottom right corner to read the complete novel. I didn't back down and continued to insist that Luther sign the divorce agreement. Luther found excuses to evade it. But what's the use of avoiding it? Just then, Stacy called me. I went out to take the call, and unexpectedly, Cindy followed me out. She was cautious, completely different from her confident demeanor at the coffee shop. 
I straightened my hair and adjusted the Cartier earrings on my ears, crossing my arms over my chest. I wanted to see what she was up to. Cindy apologized, looking like a delicate little flower. She said that if I didn't like her staying with Luther's mother, she would leave later. I was thinking about the divorce agreement and didn't want to deal with her. But Cindy became more demanding. It's my fault, causing you two to argue. I just wanted to know more about Mr. Besson, not to break you up. Cindy furrowed her brows slightly, looking pitiful. I laughed. Was this how she managed to win over Luther with such a clumsy performance? Did Luther put his brain through a shredder at the office? But I still said with a smile, anyway, I'm divorcing Luther. Do whatever you want. A hint of joy flashed in Cindy's eyes. Who knew that as I walked past her, she suddenly fell heavily to the ground. Right on time, as Luther was coming out. Luther anxiously helped Cindy up from the ground, looking at me with a blaming expression. Winnie, if you're angry, take it out on me. Why do you have such hostility towards Cindy? I sneered. Luther might as well donate his eyes if he wasn't going to use them. With his inability to distinguish right from wrong and his easily manipulated mind, who else but the Besson family would go bankrupt? I looked at Luther holding Cindy's hand and said, remember to sign the divorce agreement. Luther got a bit anxious and grabbed my wrist, Winnie, what are you doing? Cindy and I are innocent. She likes me unilaterally. I was afraid you'd misunderstand and get angry, so I didn't tell you. Afraid I'd misunderstand and get angry? I directly pulled out that photo and threw it in Luther's face. Luther's expression went through a fascinating transformation, starting with shock, then panic, and finally a trace of anger crept onto his face. You had someone secretly film me? I watched his breakdown process intently. A man's fury often stems from you having evidence that confirms his guilt. Did I need to secretly film him? He acted so openly that it was hard not to be seen. Luther continued speaking. Winnie Clark, you're always like this. Have you ever considered my feelings? Yes, you're the eldest daughter of the Clark family. Ever since the Besson family had troubles, you've always acted so high and mighty. But the Besson family isn't the bankrupt family it used to be. Even without your charity, I can still run the company well. I was slightly stunned. Did Luther really think that way? When the Besson family first started to recover, I worked late into the night with him. I helped him build connections and find resources. Did all of this look like charity to him? These past two years, I've been such a fool. The disgust in my heart almost reached its peak. If that's how you see it, there's nothing I can do. I laughed in anger. Before leaving, I reminded him once again to remember to sign the divorce agreement. Behind me came Luther's angry roar and Cindy's voice comforting him. Luther actually didn't want to divorce me. Because what he wanted was to have a stable family while having affairs outside. Just as I left the old mansion, he chased after me. Messages came one after another. I blocked him and flew to the Maldives with Stacy for a vacation. I entrusted the divorce agreement entirely to my lawyer. Luther didn't want to divorce and kept dragging it out, but Cindy wasn't easy to deal with either. She got pregnant. When the news reached me, I was sunbathing on the beach with Stacy. Stacy said, you have no idea how anxious Luther has been since we went on vacation. I just love seeing men getting all flustered. I pushed up my sunglasses and glanced at my phone. It was the 108th number Luther used to send me an apology message. Luther said that he and Cindy were innocent and that Cindy liked him unilaterally. He also said that what he said that night was just out of anger and not his true feelings. I found it extremely amusing and adjusted to a more comfortable position. Whether it was his true feelings no longer mattered. He spoke nicely, trying to absolve himself. If it were as Luther said, could Cindy have gotten pregnant all by herself? I replied with just one sentence, I know Cindy is pregnant. The messages suddenly stopped. Luther never sent another message. I turned off my phone and happily enjoyed the rest of the vacation with Stacy. The second day back in L City, Luther and Cindy found the house where I currently live. He handed me the freshly signed divorce agreement. I casually flipped through the documents in my hand. 
While I was in the Maldives, I had my assistant secure a piece of land in the southern part of the city. I raised my chin, signaling him to place the agreement on the table. Luther looked at me with a complex expression in his eyes, remaining silent. Cindy, on the other hand, was all smiles, looking radiant as if everything was going her way. I treated them as if they were invisible. Stacy's birthday was approaching, and I planned to build an amusement park in the southern part of the city as a birthday gift for her. Seeing that I had nothing more to say, Luther rubbed his knee with his palm, acting as if he was about to leave. I didn't even lift my eyelids, take care. After they left, I looked through the signed divorce agreement and felt an immediate sense of relief. Apart from some small assets of the Besson family, Luther was essentially leaving with nothing. Before we got married, he signed a prenuptial agreement. All my premarital assets were notarized. If we divorced, Luther wouldn't get a single penny from me. I looked around the villa, which was decorated in a grand, modern style. The redwood furniture in the living room alone was worth millions. I owned countless houses like this. Even the decorations in the Besson family's home were things I added when we got married. Back then, the Besson family was in decline, and my parents couldn't bear to see me suffer. After the cooling-off period for the divorce passed, I smoothly received the divorce certificate. Just as I left the Civil Affairs Bureau, Cindy updated her social media. She wrote, Good things take time. From now on, I'm Mrs. Besson. The post included a picture of a pregnancy test. I sneered, understanding why Luther had suddenly agreed to the divorce. A few years ago, he was diagnosed with oligospermia due to stress and drinking. The doctor said his chances of having children were very low. But now, Cindy was pregnant. The Besson family's legacy had a successor. Too bad, the prince of the Besson family could only inherit pots and pans. Because I withdrew all my support for the Besson family. I'm curious to see if Luther can still keep his position as CEO without me. Luther moved out of the house we used to live in. He and Cindy moved into the old mansion. Thinking about the decorations in the old mansion, all of which I put a lot of thought into. How could I let them live there comfortably? Stacy called some people, and we drove the most expensive supercar from the garage to the Besson house. Before we left, she specifically reminded me to dress up nicely. When we arrived, the moving company was already moving things out. Luther stood by with a dark expression, and his mother was shaking with anger. Cindy was dumbfounded. The workers said the most luxurious crystal chandelier was difficult to remove and might break. That chandelier was Luther's mother's favorite, and Cindy also praised it for its grand style. I decided to go all the way and had them pull it down. If it broke, so be it. How much could it be worth? Even if it broke and was thrown into the trash, I wouldn't let them have it. Cindy looked at the empty hall, disheveled in the wind. When she realized what was happening, her eyes instantly turned red. What are you doing? These are the Besson family's things. Do you believe I'll call the police? I stopped getting into the car, turned to look at her, and sneered. The Besson family's things? Didn't Luther tell you he signed a prenuptial agreement? These are all my things. Luther's face was as dark as the bottom of a pot, and his mother was gnashing her teeth in anger. But what I said was the truth, and they couldn't refute it. I got into the car swiftly. Stacy, sitting in the driver's seat, adjusted her sunglasses. She looked at Cindy and said, marrying Luther Besson was the right choice. Your good fortune is just beginning. With that, she revved the engine and sped away. I couldn't help but laugh sitting in the passenger seat. Stacy could really be sharp. I had already informed all the Besson family's business partners. It was time for the Besson family's company to go bankrupt. Thinking back to my first day back in El City, Cindy came to see me. That day, she was dressed in much finer clothes. The necklace around her neck was the one my ex-mother-in-law wore during my wedding. Even the car she drove was now a Bentley. Maybe because she was dressed so elegantly, Cindy had gained some confidence. Winnie, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to disturb you. It's just that you know, I'm pregnant with Luther's child. Winnie, you've dragged this out long enough, please hurry up and divorce him. She stood there elegantly with an Hermes bag on her arm, her neck long and slender. At that moment, I thought I had misheard and was slightly stunned. 
It turned out Cindy thought my trip to the Maldives was to avoid reality and delay the divorce. Should I call her naive or just plain stupid? Looking back, Stacy wasn't wrong. Cindy worked so hard to be with Luther. Maybe, as she said, they were truly in love? Her good fortune was indeed just beginning. I planned to stay with Stacy for a while. The project at the amusement park in the south of the city needs to be put on the agenda. Today, Stacy and I went to meet the designer. We unexpectedly ran into Zayden. Zayden is my senior from university, he pursued me passionately for four years. He won scholarships for four consecutive years and had the opportunity to pursue further studies abroad. The designer is his friend from abroad, and he accompanied his friend this time. The conversation went smoothly, and according to Stacy's preferences, the initial planning of the design drawings was quickly finalized. As we were leaving, Zayden called out to me. Sunlight poured in through the floor-to-ceiling windows, illuminating half of his body. His jawline was clearly defined, looking strikingly handsome. Stacy, with a gossipy look on her face, unhesitatingly left me behind and exited. The air felt a bit heavy. I broke the awkward silence first, saying generously, long time no see. Zayden handed me a delicate package. Glad to see you again. I knew you probably forgot to have breakfast. It's from your favorite place. I was taken aback for a moment. I had noticed the bag beside him when we came in, but I didn't expect it was for me. Thank you. I accepted it calmly and waved the package in my hand. I'll treat you to a meal sometime. I have something to do later, so I have to go now. Zayden adjusted the gold-rimmed glasses on his nose, his smile as gentle as ever. All right, I'll wait for your message. Back at the office, Stacy immediately came over with a gossip-filled expression. I tapped her on the head and stuffed the still warm pastry into her mouth. Stacy stared at me innocently, unable to speak because of the pastry. I took a bite too, the sweetness was just right, and I smiled. Zayden was still as considerate as ever. But for now, I have no thoughts about him. Luther's company is on the brink of collapse. After the divorce, I took all my premarital assets with me. The companies that used to cooperate with the Besson family because of the Clark family were now avoiding them like the plague. Even those that had already signed contracts didn't hesitate to break them and run, despite the penalties. Luther's company is one step away from bankruptcy, and life is getting harder for him. Meanwhile, Cindy, who is pregnant, has become increasingly delicate, demanding the best in everything. For the Besson family in the past, this was nothing. But now, it's adding insult to injury. Luther is overwhelmed with work at the company and has to face high expenses from his mother and lover at home. He's utterly exhausted and hasn't been home for a long time, staying at the company all the time. Stacy's face was full of schadenfreude as she talked about this. I opened my phone, and at the top of my social media feed was a nine-grid photo post from Cindy. Limited edition Hermes bags. The caption read, Someone said my good fortune is yet to come, so I'll take your word for it. It seemed like a desperate attempt to prove herself, yet a feeble counterattack. With the mindset of watching a clown, I liked her post. Stacy, wearing a face mask, spoke somewhat unclearly. Serves Luther right for doing such things. Now he can't even get a loan from the bank. The Besson family is going bankrupt again. She dragged out the word again for emphasis. I was sitting in front of the vanity, casually tossing the newly delivered custom necklace back into its box. Stacy immediately teased, be gentle. This necklace alone is worth more than the Besson family company. If Luther's mom finds out, she'll probably faint from anger. I chuckled. This girl has a sharp tongue. But she was right. Since I got married, Luther's mother has disliked me for no reason. She always boasted about her son's excellence, saying it was only natural for him to marry me. Now, her excellent son is free. Just as we were talking, Stacy's phone rang. She mentioned that there's a banquet in a couple of days and asked me to accompany her. After a little thought, I agreed. After all, I had nothing else to do. It was the perfect time to announce that the daughter of the Clark family is making a comeback. Before the banquet, Stacy specially had someone deliver an Alexis Mobile Couture dress to me. 
The green dress was gentle and lively, not overly exaggerated. Its simple design perfectly showcased a sense of sophistication. Paired with emerald earrings of the same color, the whole ensemble made me look both cool and elegant. At the banquet, the graceful and elegant sound of a violin slowly flowed through the air. Everyone present was a prominent figure in El City. Stacy and I mingled with the other ladies, when suddenly, I heard a familiar voice. As I got closer, I realized it was Luther. He was standing next to a somewhat balding executive, slightly bowing his head, looking a bit embarrassed. Beside him was Cindy, who seemed at a loss. Stacy excitedly pulled me to watch the scene unfold. I recognized the executive, his surname was King, a leading figure in the same industry as the Besson family. Mr. King looked at Luther with disdain, is this how Mr. Besson asks for help? You won't even pour me a drink, so what's the point of talking about cooperation? Luther's face turned pale and then flushed, forcing a smile, Mr. King. Before he could finish, Cindy jumped in indignantly. Mr. King, let me pour you a drink, please don't make things difficult for Mr. Besson. Cindy used her usual empathetic tactics. Even though I'm not one to enjoy others' misfortunes, I couldn't help but feel a bit of schadenfreude. Mr. King was notoriously difficult and hated having his pride hurt. Cindy's approach didn't work on Mr. King, and he even found it repulsive. Sure enough, the next second, Mr. King's mocking voice rang out. So this is Mr. Besson's new wife? She's really a downgrade from the previous one. I think we can forget about our cooperation. Mr. King snorted coldly and turned around, only to see me. His expression changed quickly, and he walked towards me with a raised wine glass. It was as if the harsh man from a moment ago wasn't him. Ms. Clark, long time no see. I just happened to have a business deal to discuss with you. I responded with a smile. Luther stood there awkwardly. Cindy's eyes filled with tears, still looking timid. A look of annoyance flashed in Luther's eyes. He looked up and met my gaze. I raised my glass and nodded at him graciously. Luther forced a bitter smile, lowered his head, and walked towards the corner. Cindy stomped her foot in frustration and followed him, lifting her skirt. After chatting with Mr. King, Stacy continued gossiping with me. I heard Luther Besson sold Cindy Cooper's Hermes bag just to get into this banquet. He wanted to cooperate with Mr. King, but it seems that's not happening now. Stacy pouted with a smile. I took a sip of champagne, a faint smile on my lips. What happens to Luther no longer concerns me. But I still wanted to see the spectacle. Lowering my head, I saw a familiar figure. Zayden raised his glass to me from afar. I returned the gesture. But I didn't want to interact with him too much. After the banquet ended, I ran into Luther outside. It seemed like he was deliberately waiting for me. I initially wanted to avoid him, but he walked straight over. Upon closer inspection, I noticed how haggard Luther looked. Dark circles under his eyes, stubble on his chin, and a few strands of gray hair. Stacy wanted to say something, but I stopped her. Luther hesitated for a long time before speaking, Winnie, we were married after all, could you not be so ruthless and cut off all my paths? I scoffed. Luther still thought it was my doing that no one wanted to cooperate with his company. But he never considered that if it weren't for me and the Clark family, no one would have cooperated with the Besson family in the first place. One major reason for the Besson family's downfall was old Mr. Besson's terrible reputation in business. When things went wrong, everyone took the opportunity to kick them while they were down. The Besson family had a bad reputation, and those companies only cooperated because of me and the Clark family. Now that we were divorced, even if I said nothing, without the Clark family's supervision and guarantee, no one would risk cooperating with the Besson family. But Luther never saw it that way. He thought all his success was due to his own efforts and that he would be better off without me. So just two years into our marriage, he got tired and betrayed our relationship without hesitation. Mr. Besson, you should spend more time reflecting on yourself. I didn't want to explain more to him, it would be like talking to a brick wall. Stacy was even harsher, taking off an earring and throwing it at Luther. Here, this earring should be enough to buy your mistress a bag. Consider it a bargain, but don't come looking for Winnie again. Otherwise, I'll make sure the Besson family goes bankrupt tonight. 
Stacy raised her fist and snorted coldly, dragging me away. Leaving Luther alone in the wind, bewildered. The next day. I received a call from Luther's mother, who was as sharp-tongued and harsh as ever. Winnie Clark, what are you up to? My son is so outstanding, are you deliberately trying to suppress him? Your heart is truly black. I rubbed my ear and held the phone a bit farther away. So what if I am? What are you going to do, kill me? If you have time, you should care more about your son and your precious grandson in Cindy's belly. Mrs. Besson shouted, what do you mean by that? I decisively hung up the phone and then forwarded the information Mr. King sent me to Mrs. Besson. At the same time, Stacy looked at her phone and got excited again. Winnie, the Besson family is bankrupt again. Huh? So soon? I thought Luther could hold on a bit longer. I looked at the exploding trending topic with some surprise. The Besson family's bankruptcy alone shouldn't have reached the top of the trending list. The next second, I refreshed the page, and the trending topics changed immediately. Hashtag Besson family bankruptcy. Hashtag Luther Besson cheating karma. Hashtag Luther Besson cuckold. In just one second, these tags shot to the top three. The mystery in my heart was solved when I received Satan's call. Mr. King had a favor to ask of me, he wanted to secure a partnership for the South City and Island Resort projects. After Cindy hinted something to Mr. King, he went to investigate. What he found was shocking. Cindy Cooper wasn't as harmless as she appeared. She had a boyfriend in secret. The child in her belly wasn't Luther's. She was simply using Luther as an ATM. And Luther, obviously, didn't know he had been cuckolded and was joyfully playing the father. Mr. King sent all the information to me, and I forwarded it to Mrs. Besson. The Besson family quickly went bankrupt, and with the exploding trending topics, it was undoubtedly Zayden's doing. I asked bluntly, was it you? Zayden's voice was a bit guilty, the usually eloquent debater even stammered a bit. Yes, but Winnie, don't be mad, listen to my explanation. Hearing his anxious tone, I couldn't help but laugh. Zayden was puzzled, Winnie, what's so funny? Nothing, it's fine, thank you. I had been a bit uncomfortable. But my assistant quickly found out that after I rejected Luther last night, he actually went to the media to slander me and Zayden. I felt a wave of disgust. Back then, I had firmly chosen Luther, but it was he who cheated, and now he was trying to turn the tables. No wonder the usually fair Zayden took direct action against Luther this time. Stacy added fuel to the fire by revealing how the Besson family had gone bankrupt before and had lived off the Clark family. Luther was utterly crushed both online and in real life. He had no chance of making a comeback. The next time I heard about Luther, he was lying in a hospital with a broken leg and couldn't afford the medical bills. After the banquet that night, Luther went back and had a big fight with Cindy. He thought Cindy had ruined his last chance. The next day, the Besson family went bankrupt at lightning speed, and Cindy immediately aborted the child, took the luxury items Luther had bought her, and fled. Soon, she latched onto another nouveau riche. As for Luther, he was completely blacklisted in the industry. Dreaming of a comeback was just that, a dream. He had high aspirations but little ability and looked down on ordinary jobs. Moreover, he was used to living an exalted life, how could he bear to be a mere worker? Under someone's coaxing, he borrowed a lot of high-interest loans, planning to make a bold move and start a business again. Unexpectedly, he was scammed, and the con artists ran off with the money. Luther couldn't repay the high-interest loans, and his mother, the poor Mrs. Besson, who had lived in luxury for most of her life, had to go out and work to pay off her son's debts. But it was a drop in the bucket. In a recent debt collection, Luther couldn't stand the insults and fought with the debt collectors. In the end, he was beaten so badly he ended up with a crippled leg, lying in a hospital bed. Mrs. Besson had no choice but to call me. Winnie, it's mom's fault for treating you that way before. Can you be the bigger person and help Luther out? After all, you were once husband and wife, you can't just abandon him. Mrs. Besson's voice was choked with sobs. Models paraded past me one after another, and I casually pointed, feeling quite good, and said to Linda, Wrap it all up, I'll take everything. Linda was overjoyed, and on the other end, Mrs. Besson's voice caught in her throat. 
I sneered, Mrs. Besson, I'm busy picking out clothes right now. As for Luther, I can't help him. Goodbye. I hung up and immediately removed the SIM card. Then I focused on picking out clothes. Before long, Stacy came down from the second floor with a beaming smile. Seeing her expression, I knew she had something to say. Sure enough, she sat next to me and asked in a sweet voice, Winnie, are you free tonight? I raised an eyebrow, hmm? Stacy looked a bit guilty. Zayden is organizing a gathering tonight. Let's go together. I leaned back, realizing she was waiting for me here. No, I said deliberately, why didn't he ask me himself? Stacy shook my arm, acting coquettishly. He promised to bring Hervey too. I suddenly understood. Hervey was the amusement park designer and Zayden's good buddy. It seemed Stacy had something going on. All right, for my friend's happiness, I'll make a little sacrifice. The gathering that night was on a yacht. We all knew each other and had a great time. I leaned against the deck railing, watching the sea and sky merge. Suddenly, the sea breeze that was blowing at me stopped. I realized someone was standing next to me. Turning my head, I saw it was Zayden.